Friends, this is Father Nelson Boren. Welcome to the Meditation Garden. Today is the twelfth Sunday in Ordinary Time. The first reading is from the book of Job, chapter 38, verses 1 to 4 and 8 to 11. The second reading is from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians, chapter 5, verses 14 to 17. The Gospel is from Mark, chapter 4, verses 35 to 41. The readings today remind us that amidst the storms of life, God will help us when we call on His name. The book of Job tells us that God answered him out of the whirlwind. May we have questions in our hearts unanswered and expecting answers, just like what happened to Job. Job was complaining before God for all the bad things that are happening in his life and the world. God teaches Job this lesson in today's first reading. With Job's complaints, God answers him by reminding him that the Lord is master, even of those bad things that he controls and limits them, according to his omnipotent wisdom. The ocean in the Old Testament, because of its mystery, power, and unpredictability, was often used as a symbol for evil and chaos. But God tells Job that he has set limits for it and fastened the bar of its door. The Gospel reminds us that God cares for us and he calmed the storms of our lives, just as he calmed the storms tossing the boat of the disciples at sea. Let us, therefore, uphold Jesus, the Word incarnate, revealing himself in the scripture readings today. A reading from the book of Job. The Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind. Who is this, that darkens counsel, by words without knowledge? I will question you, and you shall declare to me. Where were you, when I laid the foundation of the earth? Tell me, if you have understanding. Who shut in the sea with doors, when it burst out from the womb? When I made the clouds its garment, and prescribed bounds for it, and set bars and doors, and said, Thus far shall you come, and no farther, and here shall your proud waves, be stopped. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. the storm to a gentle breeze, and the billows of the seas were stilled. Give thanks to the Lord, His love is everlasting. They rejoice 
rejoiced that they were called, and he brought them to their desired haven. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his kindness and his wondrous deeds to the children of men. Give thanks to the Lord, his love is everlasting. A reading from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, the love of Christ urges us, because we are convinced, that one has died for all, therefore all have died. And he died for all, so that those who live, might live no longer for themselves, but for him who died, and was raised for them. From now on, therefore, we regard no one, from a human point of view. Even though, we once knew Christ, from a human point of view, we know him no longer in that way. So, if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation, everything old has passed away, see, everything has become new. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God has control of everything. This is the recurring theme in our scripture readings today. God has control over us, even the bad things that take place in our lives. But he takes limits on it, coming to our doors, that we can only bear it on ourselves. When Job in the first reading is complaining of all the bad things that are happening in his life, God speaks out from the whirlwind. The whirlwind in the Old Testament is a symbol of God's presence. In Jeremiah chapter 23, it describes that a whirlwind or a terrible storm had befallen the false prophets. In another biblical account, the prophet Elijah was taken by a whirlwind. In 2 Kings chapter 2 verse 11 says, As they continued walking and talking, a chariot of fire and horses of fire separated the two of them, and Elijah ascended in a whirlwind into heaven. In Job chapter 38, which is our first reading today, God speaks out of the whirlwind. Let us imagine that this encounter between Job and God was taking place in the midst of a storm. In our times, God does not appear anymore in the chariot of fire, or the burning bush, or in the case of Job, out of a whirlwind, as God has already sent his only Son, Jesus Christ, into the world. The incarnate Son of God has already walked among us on earth, and he left us the sacraments, as the visible sign of his presence and grace in our lives. In the sacrament of baptism, God gives us the grace that through the waters of baptism, we are cleansed from original sin, and more importantly, we become God's children and heirs of his kingdom. In the Holy Eucharist, Jesus is truly present, body, soul, and divinity in the sacred species of bread and wine. So God is so close to us and his presence always manifests whenever we celebrate his sacraments. God's presence also manifests in the proclamation of his word. And in our times, we are extending the proclamation of God's word on online platforms and the internet. The second reading from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians tells us that the love of Christ urges us. In other words, through the love we experience from Christ and the grace that overflows from his power and divinity urges us to remain faithful to his commandments. As St. Paul says, so if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away, see, everything has become new. If we are in Christ, it means we are dependent on his providence, while we do our part to cooperate with God's plan for us. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. When evening had come, Jesus said to his disciples, Let us go across to the other side. 
and leaving the crowd behind, they took Jesus with them in the boat, just as he was. Other boats were with him. A great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat, so that the boat was already being swamped. But Jesus was in the stern, asleep on the cushion, and they woke him up, and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? He woke up and rebuked the wind, and said to the sea, Peace. Be still. Then the wind ceased, and there was a dead calm. Jesus said to them, Why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great awe, and said to one another, Who then is this, that even the wind and the sea, obey him? The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. God is in control of everything. Friends, we have been reflecting on this theme from our readings today. Just like Job, who heard an answer from God, out of the whirlwind, the disciples in the gospel, give us a close-up view of God's effortless control of the seemingly most uncontrollable forces on earth. With just a word, he makes the wind and the sea obey. Notice how St. Mark mentions both the wind and the sea. The sea stands for the realm below the earth, below mankind's dwelling place. The wind stands for the sky, the realm above the earth. And Jesus, the Almighty Lord, in whom we believe, is master of them all. To understand further the awesome power of Christ in the Gospel episode today, we need to activate our imagination. Few situations leave men so helpless and despairing as storms at sea. Let us understand that the Sea of Galilee, where the disciples were sailing in this case, is still known for the violence of its squalls, which arise and subside rapidly and unpredictably due to its peculiar geographical situation. It is located at the bottom of a long funnel created by rows of mountains to the north. Air traveling through the narrowing valley bursts onto the sea with the explosive force of a flash flood squeezed through a garden hose. In the midst of this storm, the potencies of nature unleash their full, terrifying violence and human fragility is helplessly exposed. St. Mark makes it quite clear that the disciples, many of whom were fishermen by trade and familiar with boats and sea storms, feared for their lives. So we can safely assume that this storm was no minor agitation. That a mere word from the Lord reigns in nature's primeval power shocks the helpless fishermen even more than the stormy sea had frightened them just moments before. They had seen the Lord's miracles, they had heard his wisdom, they had witnessed his power over the human heart. But to see the most unruly powers that flow through the parts of the universe submit like a well-trained golden retriever, this was a lordship they had not yet even conceived of. This is the lordship of our God and Savior, Jesus Christ. So today, let us be reminded that when we experience various whirlwinds or storms in life, we should be encouraged by this reminder that our God, our eternal Father, who loves us and is always watching over us, is all-powerful. But how can we apply this beautiful and encouraging truth to our daily lives? St. Ignatius of Loyola, the 16th century knight, turned priest who founded the Jesuits, has a good piece of advice in this regard. He used to say that a true Christian should pray as if everything depended upon God, but work as if everything depended upon himself. This sounds like a contradiction, but it isn't. When life storms batter us, our families, and our communities, our first reaction should always be the same as the reaction of the apostles in today's gospel, to go to Jesus, to wake him up, to place our confidence in him, through sincere, heart-to-heart -heart prayer. He will hear us because he is always listening. And then, having put the situation in God's hands, the best way to show him that we truly trust him is to confidently do whatever we can to help achieve the outcome we think is best whatever next step occurs to us. In conclusion, in a hockey game, it is said that a goalie is the most difficult position to play within the ice rink and one of the hardest to play in any sport. The main objective for a goalie is to keep the puck out of the net and with a great one, they can control the game and greatly influence their team's confidence. Similarly, God is like our goalie 
and he has chosen to build his kingdom in this world through our faith and trust in him whom he has power over us and even the storm in our lives. May the word of God enrich your life, give you comfort and peace, and as always, send you his blessings. Let us pray. God our loving Father, we praise and thank you for this day. Be present to your people, O Lord, and gladden us with holy joys, love, and peace. Make us rejoice, O Lord, in devout thanksgiving, for the gift of the Church, where graces and blessings flow from your goodness. As we contemplate the meaning of our lives, and in times, when we experience storms of any kind, we may trust in your power as Lord over us and the world. Lord, like the apostles, we may call on your name, when our faith and our lives are battered by the storms at sea, relying on your merciful aid and help. Help us that we may not be carried so easily by the cares of this world, but walk anew each day with the help of your grace, until the day we come into your kingdom. Lord, I pray for those who are sick, whose prayers have been promised for them, and those who are asking for prayers during this time of need. Send them your healing power, comfort, and peace during this time, and those who care for them. May your word touch our hardened hearts caused by sin, that we may rise to reach out to your merciful heart. Thank you, Lord, for sending us the Holy Spirit, that has filled our hearts with your peace. Empower us with your love, through your Spirit dwelling within us. Lord, bring all those who have gone before us, to your eternal peace, so that one day, we shall meet them again in the fullness of your glory, our loved ones, who remain faithful to your power and goodness. We ask this in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Let us go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. the storm to a gentle breeze, and the billows of the seas were stilled. Give thanks to the Lord, His love is everlasting. They rejoiced that they were calm. And he brought them to their desired haven. 
let them give thanks to the Lord for his kindness and his wondrous deeds to the children of men. Give thanks to the Lord, his love is everlasting.